আমি ধরে সেই গ্রামে আর কি যাওয়া হয় তার ঘরে তার ঘরে যাতে গেলে তারা তো অবাক হয়ে যায় তাই তো আমার ছেলেটার নাম কি করে জানলো এই হলো জাদু আর অন্য কিছু নেই অন্য লোকের কাছে মানে খবর লি করে যায় মানে সেখানে চক্ষুদান করা হয় এই আর অন্য কিছু নেই In the context of the Santhals, the Patuas are commonly referred to as Jadu Patuas or Magic Painters. The primary reason for this title are the Chakshudan Jean paintings they produce for the Santhal families of the recently deceased. The Chakshudan painting would depict a deceased Santhal without the eyeballs, thus signifying that the spirit of the deceased would wander around blind in the afterlife unless the painter paints the eyeballs after being paid for. On hearing of a death in a Santhal community, the Jadu Patua would approach the mourning family with a painting depicting either a man or a woman young or old according to the age and sex of the deceased the artist would then offer to restore sight to the dead in exchange for objects often depicted in the paintings themselves by executing the transformative act of painting the eye of the spirit of the dead the patuas were transformed from painters to magic painters but they were never considered extortionist. This art has three elements that are very important. The first is that it is art that is not divorced from life. It is not alienated. It is art that takes life and death naturally. And the Jadu Patwas, in fact, bring the dead person to life through the painting. And this is what gives them the very special contemporary character. Because life and death are not seen as separate things. They're seen as a continuity. Death is there and life is there. And all of it is a part of the process of living. Philosophically, I think the Santals are much more sound than many of your religions which uh, dwell too much on heaven and hell. The art historian Mildred Archer identified seven distinct themes of Santhal painting other than the Chakshudan Pat. Death's kingdom or Jumraj is to this day a common theme of the Jadu Patwas. The Lord of Death, Jom, is commonly depicted as obese and dark in complexion, dealing out his punishments to the wicked soul. His minions, usually smaller dark figures, are also depicted in these scrolls, ravaging and torturing those who have been punished by Job. This type of scroll, in part, functions as a didactic, reinforcing the Santhal's own moral code. Another type of scroll depicts the Santhal flower festival of Bahapurub, which occurs between February and March, marking the beginning of the new farming year. The scroll would depict the various activities involved in this festival, including the dances and the ritual sacrificing of coal by the Naiki or the Santhal priest. The festival occurs in the sacred grove of the Santhal village called the Jahir Than or the place of the Bonga Jahir era. As the Bahapurub is considered to be the holiest of Santhal festivals, homage is paid to the trinity of Maranburu, Moreko Tuiko, and Jahirira. During the festival, sacred stones represent each of these bungas. And like found art, they are recontextualized, each stone having been placed under a corresponding sal tree. Even now, among the most popular of the scroll paintings, is the depiction of the Santhal story of creation. There are many subtle variations to the narrative for which there are two possible explanations. Firstly, the creation story has been told and retold from an outsider point of view, from missionaries transcribing the narrative into English in the late 19th century. 
Also, the Jadu Patwas themselves have been depicting the story in their scrolls as outsiders to the Santhal people. Secondly, the Santhals themselves must have accepted foreign elements, specifically mainstream Hinduism, that suited the structure of their own beliefs. The Santhal creation story, as the English-speaking world knows it, is derived from the translations provided by two European missionaries in the late 19th century. They were Reverend Elo Sreftsbrud, who produced his translation in 1870, and Reverend A. Campbell, who wrote his in 1892. The supreme god of the Santhals, Thakurjiu, created water creatures from the great mass of water covering the whole earth. Then he commanded the water creatures to create earth and created two birds, Hans and Hasil. From the birds came the two human forms, the ancestors of Santhals, namely Pilku Haram and Pilku Budhi, Western equivalents of Adam and Eve. From them sprung the Santhal clan. In the process, three more gods came into being, Maranbaru, Moreko Turuiko, and Jahir Era, who entered the folklore signifying possibly the Hindu concept of the Trinity. Interwoven in the creation story are the tales of creation, destruction, and recreation of Santhal tribes. Curiously, the first panel of many creation story scrolls and Baha festival scrolls often depicts the Bonga trinity of Maranburu, Moreko Turuiko and Jahir Era in the form of the Hindu Vaishnav trinity of Jagannath, Balabhadra and Subhadra from the Puri temple. The local mythology contains a legend where the 18 sons of an old Santhal king were beheaded and their streams of blood were transformed by a Bonga into waterways that travelled from the Santhal Parganas to the Jagannath temple in Puri. The tiger scrolls are especially interesting as they have a religious significance for the Hindus, the Muslims and the Santhals alike. Both local Muslims and Hindus worship Bade Khan Ghazi, the god responsible for controlling the tiger in much of rural Bengal. By the proper invocation, Ghazi is believed to protect the villagers from tigers or leopards attacking them and their livestock. Among the Hindus and Muslims who live near the Santhal Parganas, Ghazi is also known as Satyapir and is depicted by the Jadu Patwas as a Muslim holy man mounted on a fierce tiger. Possibly due to the dwindling of the tiger population, Many Satyapir or Ghazi scrolls depict the spotted leopard instead of the tiger, reflecting more accurately the current ecological reality. Performing artists also take the roles of Satyapir and perform story-based jatras from village to village. এটি হলো কোকিল গায়ের নেজ এটি ছেলেদের মাথায় দিলে জ্বর জ্বর কমে যায় জ্বর কমবে কি এটি কোকিল গায়ের নেজ ওরে ভজ নারায়ণ জপ নারায়ণ লহ নারায়ণের নাম রে ওরে যে জন নারায়ণ ভজে Moreover, paintings depicting the Hindu lion-headed god Narayan are sometimes locally viewed as being synonymous with Satyapir, especially among the Muslim Jadu Patwas themselves. Without any obvious reference to Santhal culture, Archer also refers to scrolls celebrating the stories of Krishna as among important types of Jadu Patwa painting. Specifically, the stories revolving around Krishna's exploits and merriment with the milkmaids are specially popular. 
Archer argues that the reason for these scrolls being so popular among the Santhas is that the dance and playfulness of the narratives reflect the Santhals' own ethos, which can be witnessed in their own dance traditions and festivals. Jadu Patwas also paint scrolls depicting the mythological heroes of the 12 Santhal clans, furthering these paintings' role as an insight into the cultural heritage of the Santhals. The Santhals congregate around the temple area and partake in the general festivities, dancing and drumming. Though this is still a popular activity for the Santhals, the scroll genre is not as popular as it once used to be. There have been many recent developments in urban galleries and museums to accommodate folk and tribal art. This in many ways has had an impact on the traditional forms and themes. Dr. Jyotindra Jain, art historian and director of the Department of Arts and Aesthetics, Jawaharlal Nehru University, argues that this is a positive step as it potentially creates an environment conducive to innovation as well as breaking down the rigid barriers that still tend to separate low from high art forms. A modern Indian artist uh, has always uh, been painting or creating works of art also deriving inspiration from uh, the, uh, the so-called folk and tribal tradition. We have several examples. Uh, we have examples of Haripura murals. Uh, we have examples of Jamini Roy. Particularly, Jamini Roy was quite a, uh, quite a, a kind of leader uh, of a movement in which he would derive inspiration from the works of uh, uh, Patuas and also from uh, clay painted, clay figures, etc., toys and things he, he saw and he derived. The great masters of modern Indian art like Jamini Roy and New Bengal School of Painters, especially Nandalal Bose in the Haripura Congress series, used elements of the Patua imagery and other indigenous art traditions to define a modern aesthetic that was truly Indian. For example, this Francesco Clemente, who does a lot of collaborations with Indian uh, folk and tribal artists, and I think one of his critics once said a marvelous thing. He said that Clemente works through another's consciousness. Now, suppose I work through my own consciousness, I know what I can produce, so it's very predictable. But if I work with you, I don't know how your consciousness will work in co collaboration with mine and therefore something more wonderful can happen. So as a tool I think many things can uh, can happen uh, working in collaboration. Now is the question of modern artists resisting the coming of the tribal artists in modern art spaces as they call, they say that this is our space, this is modern art space, it is not fair for tribal artists to come in uh, because they are working in another genre from another tradition. I think their worry is uh, not right and I, for my feeling, uh, as I call it, they, they are suffering from what I call Kabuliwala uh, syndrome. Uh, you remember the story of Rabindranath uh, Thakur that uh, he wrote about a Kabuliwala who came to India and uh, he, uh, he stayed here for 10, 15 years to earn money selling uh, uh, pista and uh, uh, you know, dry fruits. And when he was leaving for India from uh, Afghanistan, uh, his daughter gave a small impression of her foot and said that when you come back, bring me uh, shoes uh, for me. And he was carrying the foot impression. When 10, 12 years later, when he was returning, he suddenly remembered. So he brought out a piece of paper and went to a cobbler and said, please make uh, shoes for my uh, daughter. Uh, she had told me to bring shoes. So when he took out and then they talked and uh, Kabuliwala said, I brought this, you know, 12 years ago. So he said, by now your daughter must have got grown up and got married also. So what will you do with these small shoes? I think like that, contemporary artists are still thinking that folk and tribal artists are still in that age and that in these uh, 50, 70 years they haven't changed or as if uh, modernity, life around them has not as if influenced them. So I think they are suffering from uh, Kabuliwala syndrome. The Jadupat or magic paintings depicting the songs and sorrows of the lives of the Santhals 
have passed from the idyllic world of the Santals and Patuas of yesteryears to the present fast-changing world. Overtaken by the march of time, bypassed by ready-made entertainment galore, and forsaken by the diminishing interest of their Santal patrons, Patuas today are seeking greener pastures, abandoning their time-honored profession. Only a few survive today, trying desperately to make a living out of it, thus keeping it from vanishing altogether.